thank you for your time. This presentation is on the RTEC AQ series voice recorder and will be a general sales overview. Before we get into the actual hardware side of the um, AQ voice recorder, I'd like to have a think about this. Most businesses, when they're either sending a fax or sending an email or writing a letter, will keep a copy of these communications on file. They do this so that they've got records to refer back to so they can verify what was sent to the customer. But in any given business, whether it be small or large, well over 99% of the communications is done via voice. The majority of the disputes comes up when either a staff member or a customer requested something or informed that something would happen that has, and the end party is misunderstood this is what has been said. So, I guess the question is, why is it that we keep such a small amount of records when we're sending of our communications and emails, faxes and letter writing, but we are not actually recording not the 98% or 99% of the communications that we're doing with customers? Why do people record conversations nowadays? There's any number of reasons, and it can, doesn't really matter if it's a small customer with one or two people, right through to large corporates. Generally, they'll do it for customer satisfaction, uh, employee evaluation or training, recalling of conversations, e.g. a customer rings up, orders a certain thing, or an employee told the customer a certain model number and price, and that's what the customer's relying on. Compliance regulations, whether it be in insurance, banking, um, or uh, contract work. Reduced liability to disputes and lawsuits. This is an important point. Nine times out of ten, a dispute will arise out of a miscommunication. Either something was, sent, was said to the customer, and the customer doesn't recall, or the customer is saying that something was said to them by a certain staff member and they have mis been misinformed. By recording all these conversations, these can be easily, uh, these disputes, well disputes can be avoided because basically you can look back at the recordings, listen to what was hint, said, and immediately put a stop to the uh, ongoing dispute and losing potential, potentially a good customer in the, f uh, in the process. It's to improve the quality uh, of service and to reduce data errors and so, so that the recordings can easily be gone back to and listened to again and again. It's for automated third party verification, whether in contract work or uh, doing sales work for a third party. It's for security and it's for legal. Whatever the reason, the RTEC voice recorders can offer a solution that is very cost effective for a very small company through to a very large end corporate customer. In this presentation, we're just going to be we're going to be going over as an overview of the AQ series voice recorder. The RTEC AQ series is a standalone server which can record from four ports and be expanded through to eight ports. It records PSDN lines or CO lines, e.g. telecom lines or main carrier lines. It can record SLT extensions. It can also uh, carry a combination of wired telephones and radio communications or even microphone room recording if you wish a boardroom or a meeting room to be recorded or uh, a teaching environment to be recorded um, uh, for lectures etc. Why stand alone? There are solutions out there in the market that use a, a PC base for um, a recording solution. And these have got their place and some of them are, qu are quite good. The advantage of an RTEC embedded operating system and being a standalone recorder is that it doesn't have a keyboard, it doesn't have a display you have to worry about, it doesn't have um, operating system updates that uh, the computer needs to reboot or, or and at times nowadays will actually reboot, reboot themselves and um, disable the recorder while it's rebooting. As a dedicated standalone recorder 
Its sole purpose in life is to record your conversations, and that's what it'll do 24/7. So you don't have to, you don't forget to turn on a PC. You don't have the inherent problems of a um, PC operating system with updates and or viruses, etc. The AQ series voice recorder has an option of uh, well, has an LCD screen, uh, which is a touch screen. This enables uh, full access to the um, recorder functions, and the recorder can actually be used as a completely standalone unit on someone's desk, where they can actually set up the recorder, listen to the recordings, search for the recordings, play the recordings, etc. You don't need a PC. Of course, there is a, a, the um, the Artec Black Box PC client software, which enables you to um, have up to 30 um, clients log into the recorder at any one time to have different levels of access so they can search and uh, administer the recorder themselves but it also starts off from a very uh, basic perspective with the um, LCD screen and a standalone function. The LCD screen on the recorder is a high definition touch screen. It um, basically displays all the parameters on the recorders, it allows um, networking to be uh, network to be set up, the channel status to be displayed, the uh, you can search for recordings, play through recordings, um, etc. Or just simply uh, once it is run up and running, can give a status of the uh, each individual line. Okay, now we're just going to run through the AQ series uh, voice recorder options. We'll start off with the uh, AQ, the AQ four. This has uh, got no LCD um, on board. It is the entry level uh, recorder. It has four recording ports with an SD card for uh, storage. The reason it hasn't got the LCD is purely for cost. This is so that it's an entry level for people who simply just want to have the four line recorder and use the black box, uh, black, black box um, software client that's going to be installed on their PCs on the network. The next level up is the AQ4L. This is the LCD, has the high definition LCD screen. This allows the recorder to basically be a, run as a standalone uh, desktop box um, with the LCD. So it could be sitting on a supervisor's or manager's desk, have the phone lines of the system going through it, and then the manager can see all the status, um, do, do the setup, do the recording, do the searching, etc., for the conversations on the recorder. But of course, also it has the option of um, installing a black box um, client. Again, it's for port and it has the SD card memory. Now the SD card starts off at 4 gig, which is the entry level um, starting point for the uh, SD card, but then can head through to 64 gig SD cards. We then have the AQ4LH. Now this is the LCD version of the um, AQ4, but instead of, instead of having an SD card, it has a full uh, 2.5, 500 gigabyte internal hard drive. So, has all the functionality of the AQ4L, but with naturally masses amount of storage um, on board the system. Then basically we step up through to the AQ8 series. Now the AQ8 is simply an, simply is, uh, has an additional four ports installed on board, allowing a total of eight ports to be um, recorded uh, simultaneously. And we have the AQ8, again without the LCD for entry level, the AQ8L, and then the AQ8LH. We're now going to have a, a quick close, or a closer look at the uh, AQ recorder uh, in the next slide. Hello everybody, my name is Steve. I'm here to give you an overview of the AQ series voice recorders. What we've got here, sitting in front of us here, is an AQ4 series recorder. Uh, we'll be going through the different um, different variations that you can have on this recorder, but we'll just be using this one as a, uh, a base starting point. So let's start off at the front panel. If we, we have a look at it here, we can see that uh, we've got a um, small power light indication here that'll come on red when the um, unit is powered up. We have got a uh, USB um, 
slot there. Uh, that is basically for um, USB sticks and um, to store uh, voice files, etc., memory, or load software on uh, from a technical perspective. We've got uh, an SD card here. Now, here's one of the, uh, the areas that we need to just to explain a couple of points. This card just pushes in there, then pops out like so. Now, this is um, the standard uh, card it comes with, which is um, 4 gig. If you uh, need anything larger from an SD card, you can look at the te technical documentation or just walk through some of your options. Now, the um, SD card comes with the standard AQ4 and AQ8 um, model, and also comes with the, the AQ4L and the AQ8L. Okay, there is another model called the AQ4. LH and the AQ8 LH. Now the H standing for hard drive, so it's got a 500 gig or a one terabyte option um, hard drive internally. So that just fits back in here, like so. Okay, so we roll now, just heading towards um, the top here. Now, an AQ4L, the L stands for LCD, which is a touchscreen LCD just sitting here. Um, if we've just got a standard AQ4L, I've got another one just sitting over here, we can see that this one doesn't have uh, any screen. It's still got your SD card sitting here, just like it's a brother, but it hasn't got the LCD screen. Main reason for that is cost. Um, this is, what we, is the entry level of uh, the AQ range. It can still be 4 or 8 channel. But uh, it's just a cost-driven thing too, so that the customer doesn't need, or if they don't require to have the uh, LTD. But I'll just put that to one side at the moment, and I'll continue with the um, the uh, L series, with the um, LCD series units. So we've got a touchscreen here. We'll fire this up later and just walk through that. Now we're just going to have a look around here and at the back of the unit. Okay, we've talked about AQ4s and AQ8s. What makes it is either four channels, or if it's an eight, it'll have another channel row above the sets here. They come, uh, the plugs come in pairs, and they're basically in and out, line and phone. So that's one, cir uh, one circuit in and out, two circuits in and out, three circuits in and out, four circuits in and out. If we wish to expand this, we can by simply unscrewing the box here, 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 and here. And we can then take the lid off and have access to the uh, internal components. And we can mount a uh, new expansion card. And what we do is, if um, you can't see it very well, probably here, but this is, this is a, actually a, a panel which is actually stuck onto the main chassis. Now, behind that panel is the other slot which has been cut in the actual metal, and a complete set of printing, etc., that duplicates everything that it has here except for it has an, an additional eight, um, sorry, an additional um, four. Okay, then we've got your LAN and a WAN port here. Now this is sort of a little bit more for future use um, on this recorder, we'll uh, release that later on, but essentially when you're installing it, uh, technicians, you use your LAN port to install. The LAN port at this point in time is not used. You also have a serial port here, which is RS-232, uh, some of you may know. This is um, basically used for connection to a telephone systems um, SMDR unit, so that you can get the uh, call detail recording from the phone system. On the AQ, you can use a standard serial cable, or you can actually even connect to a system with a TCIP slot, so you can get the SMDR uh, across the land as well. That is used so that when we put the um, recorder in front of the PABX, e.g. across the CO line or central office lines in front of the, um, the PABX, we can then also plug in the PABX's or IP PBX's um, SMDR information into the recorder and then actually match up the extension information with the trunk information so we've got total transparency across the system. Um, and full reporting, so we can search from extensions, we know what extensions made, what and ever. And it actually, in, in, in many respects, it actually keeps a complete record of core detailed recording on the PABX without having to have another PA, another uh, PC to do that. The LAN port, also quickly going back to that, also allows the um, unit to be connected to the customer's network so that they can um, 
connect to um, the client software, the um, what they call the black box software, which installs on the uh, client's um, PCs around the network, and they can log in and um, from their PC and actually do various changes and alterations, etc. Search for records, download records, um, do settings, etc. There you've just got uh, your power plug, which is um, basically plugs into a um, external power pack, such as this one here. And then you've got the uh, on-off switch. Okay, so that's as a quick overview what it does as in regards to the bits and bobs and connections on it. So what we're going to do is just plug in the uh, power here and we're going to turn on the unit. Okay, so the startup of the uh, Artec IQ is very fast. We um, It's probably one of the uh, quicker systems out there. It's got an embedded um, operating system on board. So it'll basically do a run-up, uh, start loading up its operating system, and probably within a minute it's up and running. So it's probably one of the quickest um, uh, recorders out there for starting up. And as you can see, we have now got the screen up and running. Now the screen here, I'll just try and get it so you can see it a little clearer. How's that? That's a little bit better. The screen here is a, a fully touch screen. So, well through we can connect into the uh, customer's uh, network and the customer can load software up to manage this um, recorder. It can actually even be run, can even be run as a standalone recorder on someone's desk. So you could put like, uh, it's got some brackets so you can actually mount them so it sits up like so, and you can actually touch certain icons, do searching, etc. So for example here, that bleeping there is just giving us a warning that we've got um, some lines not connected because this recorder isn't connected or anything. But if I press the CDR file here, now it's telling me, it's actually, well through there's no records on here because it hasn't been running, that's given me all the uh, calls that it would have made. There's inbound, if I press that, it clicks into that tab, another tab is outbound, outbound missed calls, record, recordings and important. Now the other thing you'll notice about the AQ, the touchscreen is actually quite responsive. It's it's a nice quality screen, the, the, the graphics are um, very clear on board and quite detailed. You can do searching, so there's another icon here, so we can just click into searching, so we've got date searching here for just basic searching, or we can actually go into advanced searching, so we can go channel ID, channel uh, phone number, extension number, inbound, outbound, was it a, a trigger recorded such as an RT or a voice room recorder or anything such as that? Just press the back key, back again, it goes back to the main unit. It has monitoring on board so we can actually go across um, and press each channel that was active and then we can actually um, listen to the conversation that's happening without uh, anyone, well, without the two party pairing us. So from a, a supervisor's perspective it's um, quick and easy and they can have full functionality from this LCD. Click on status and it'll actually give, give us a, um, so we're just going a little bit out of focus here, there we go, back in. So, and, um, so on the status it's actually giving the status of the lines, at the moment they've all got grey X's on them, I'm not sure if that's coming through as clear as it should be again, but basically this will be saying whether the um, lines are plugged in, whether they're on hook, off hook, ingoing calls, outgoing calls, etc. So it gives a real time status, so from a maintenance perspective on a, a small PAVX, it's pretty brilliant. For, um, settings, so we can actually have the full access to all the um, settings that are available on the um, recorder. Just click back out of here. We've got our network settings. So we've got, uh, can set our IP addresses, we can set DNS addresses, MAC addresses, etc. So, tools, etc. for backing up. So, I would, so as you can see, the, the AQ series, particularly with its um, LCD screen, is a, quite a versatile little unit. It's simple to use um, from a customer's perspective. It's simple to install from uh, a technician's perspective. And just the day-to-day the -day operation um, in regards to giving you line statuses, etc. Um, of the um, of the recorder, it's a, a very versatile and um, user-friendly device for the customers. Thank you uh, for taking the time and um right.
we're just going to run through a couple of the uh, AQ um, series recorder features. The rec all recordings that are um, made on the uh, recorder can be um, encrypted um, so that uh, you cannot uh, listen or play any of the recordings without having the authorized um, login and um, RTEC, RTEC software. Or we could also save it just as a WAV format, which is easy to um, email and to copy across to um, different um, servers or, or drives. If you do have the um, encryption activated and you wish to email it, the um, software will give you an option to decrypt it and put it into a WAV format or send it as an encrypted format. It has multi-level um, users authorization so that we can have like um, a full supervisor administrator enabling them to monitor calls and uh, delete records and uh, all that um, functionality but also we might just have uh, users who just who just want to be able to log in and just simply listen to conversations uh, so each uh, user would have their own individual um, login and password and the recorder will actually even keep a track of who has logged in and what recordings they've been listening to the search engine on the AQ series is uh, very powerful. We can search by day, time, date. Uh, we can search by um, uh, length of call, um, the time of the call, the phone number, the extension number, whether it be incoming, outgoing, um, and we can search even groups or groups of numbers or a group of uh, calls that are from a particular number and or extension. We can do a live uh, call monitoring as indicated in one of the earlier points in the presentation. This allows a supervisor to be able to sit at their PC or even at the AQ unit itself, uh, see that uh, a certain agent is on a call and they can actually just click onto that call in the software program and the conversation will then start streaming through real time to the um, administrator so that they can do uh, quality uh, of call management etc. The call recording memory is exceedingly flexible on the AQ series. Um, it can, as, as uh, indicated earlier, the, uh, the standard entry level um, card is uh, 4 gigabyte, um, which would basically give 640 hours of recording, but then can be expanded through to 32 or even up to 64. The AQ4LH with the ex uh, internal hard drive it can, is a 500 gigabyte um, standard but can actually be um, upgraded through to a 1 terabyte or 2 terabyte if required. Network access is through the RJ45. This uh, easily allows anybody uh, in the uh, network um, customers LAN to be able to have the client software and log into the recorder and uh, have access um, of what they wish to do and of course again because the AQ has its own LCD can be used as a standalone. The phone book um, feature uh, is on the uh, recorder. This integrates two um, Outlook programs and you can import a complete Outlook contact or public folder into the um, AQ series. Now this is an unlimited, basically an unlimited number um, series. It's basically name and number. If you do use this feature, it actually even offers um, simple um, basic call popping. A lot of the customers we found um, import their customer database into their recorders. Um, uh, we've got particularly um, car wreckers, they like this feature because they have their um, the guys, their call agents logged in to the uh, recorder and uh, when the calls come in the numbers will pop up on the screen and they'll know what customer it is and they can uh, treat them appropriately and give the, uh, the various price levels that they uh, would give out if they're uh, like a, a mainline dealer or just a, um, a level one type sort of dealer for resales etc. Uh, the AQ has uh, multiple system alarms for abnormal problems such as if the, the power goes down on the line uh, there's a hard drive issue or uh, a critical error. Um, if there's a hard drive error, the main unit will uh, sound an alarm. It will, uh, after about 30 seconds of sounding an alarm, it'll then uh, try to do an auto recover. 
uh, it first does this by doing a, re, uh, a reboot and then if it again if the hard drive has a problem it will continue to alarm. The uh, other functionality in alarm, alarm monitoring within the uh, system is also whether the power goes down or the um, power goes off on the individual lines and uh, it'll pop up an alarm box and um, play a tone. Uh, again earlier you might have heard this tone played on the uh, the demo unit that uh, was being shown to you because there's no lights connected to it and it just gave a, a warning tone. Call and line ID is standard on the voice um, recorders. Uh, this uses the uh, FSK incoming which is universal uh, incoming call and line ID. So uh, when the call comes in, um, if your network has got um, call line ID enabled, it will actually record that call on line ID. On outgoing calls it will actually record the DTMF and of course then uh, so you can search by out dialed number and incoming number and of course if you uh, connect the SMDR etc if required you can actually then search by extension level. Voice compression on the recorder is basically using ADPCM or you can use the standard WAV format. Because this is an analog based recorder we can actually inject voice announcements and answering machine on it. Now these are if uh, some customers just has a uh, basic uh, setup and they don't have a PABX or uh, some type of system to do um, internal uh, sorry voice injection onto incoming calls for example uh, they wish to announce that uh, they have reached XYZ company and uh, the call may be trained uh, recorded for training purposes. The AQ can do this by um, simply on answer. When the agent answers or the customer answers, it'll play a greeting and that greeting will be heard by the person who's answered and the external caller and of course is recorded so it is uh, a verified record that uh, the call is being recorded. The um, recorder also is a um, multi-recording interface. So that basically means that if we've got four or eight ports, we can have um, CA line recorder or a number of CA lines recorded in each port. We may have an RT circuit they wish to record. Um, and a lot of RT, a lot of companies now are recording are recording RTs, whether it be down to the truck level. We've got um, heavy machinery now with uh, single line recorders and recording RTs from a, a forestry or logging type company environment, right through to your taxis or security um, aspect when uh, they are recording the RT. So. A single recorder can be set up to record RTs on one port, um, a couple of ports of CO lines, and maybe even they want to have a uh, room or counter um, recording so that uh, any transactions um, uh, for, for a meeting room, for example, they may record the conversation. Um, I know that can sound a bit strange, but it is um, sometimes a requirement just for re reviewing things, but also tran uh, customer transactions on front counters. Um, so that uh, any um, disputes or uh, confrontations um, at the front counter can be recorded and captured uh, on the uh, voice recorder. The search engine, as we've talked about, is very easy to use um, and quite powerful to um, find the recording that you wish. And um, we can actually even download the records that we've found to the local drive of the PC or a public drive, or actually even email these through with um, details of the um, call detail recording of what has been uh, sent. The recording uh, functionality on the AQ can is pretty uh, flexible. For example, we can have the recording recording all calls all the time. We might have a situation where um, a call for some reason does not much wish to be recorded, e.g. the boss might want to uh, decide that he doesn't want to record his conversation. So by simply dialing the code, so for example we could have the recorder recording all calls, then halfway through he might decide, well I don't want this code to be done, and he knows a code that he can dial on his phone, and that will actually tell the recorder, do not record this, and the recorder will actually drop that call and not record the conversation. Now this can be done at any time during the conversation, even right at the very end of it. Or we actually might have it the opposite way around. We've got a number of customers that they don't want their um, calls recorded unless they want to, and then they can dial a code to get the recorder to turn on its recording. Now this is quite handy because at any stage during that conversation they can dial this start record code and 
once they do that the recorder is actually already recording the conversation it just hasn't saved it yet and once you've said start recording it captures the entire recording conversation so it might be just simply a customer that doesn't want to record all conversations but wants a, a method so that if a situation arises they can immediately dial some code and the, that call will be captured so this is uh, one of the RTX specialties in regards to you can simply say right record this call and because the RTX sitting there monitoring all activity on the um, the lines they can simply say right save that call and it'll save the call entirety. It also, the RTEC range is also what they call PCI compliant, which is personal credit card information compliance. This is a requirement by many banks now, uh, even on an international basis. So fundamentally what that means is that I might be uh, recording a call or selling you something, and now I need to take your credit card details. Now PCI means that I'm not allowed to actually record or hold your credit card details on record. So now all I do is simply say, well, okay, Mr. Casper, we're going to take your uh, credit card details now. Uh, you're going to hear a couple of beeps. I dial a code, for example, in this case, star 7. And what the recorder will do will say, ah, you wish to mute this recording from this point. Now, the recorder keeps on recording it, but now whilst we're talking here and you're giving me all your credit card details, it has muted the conversation. So, and then at the end of it, I can say, right, we're going to turn it back on again. I'll dial hash 7. The recorder now activates the uh, recording again, but it'll have even that muted um, part of the conversation recorded so, and with all the introduction of the agent before and after. So they can um, uh, keep capture the entire conversation. Highlights of the recorder, the sound quality is exceedingly good. It has active sound level control with automatic gain uh, between the local side and it makes it's a good solid sounding um, recording. It has a good strong solid search engine which is easy for the customer to use. One of the nice things about the Artec product range is customers like using them. Why? Because they're simple to use, they're understandable to use, there's nothing complicated about them. They have all the functionality and complexity behind them, but when it boils down to it, when the customer just wants to search for a record, see what a line's doing, the RTEC is very simple to use. The recording filter, we can uh, start doing multi-conditional recording and automatically filter the calls we don't want recorded. We can do that per line, we can do that per extension, um, exception numbers, um, we might have a, a list of numbers we don't that are incoming calls that are from certain numbers we decide we don't want to record. It might be that the boss is extension 215 and we've got the SMDR all set up on the recorder and anything an extension 215 makes because he's the boss, he doesn't want it recorded, we can make sure that the recorder doesn't uh, record that, those details. We have an encrypted data format which is uh, cannot be broken so if the recorder or hard drive uh, is um, information is breached and taken away uh, you cannot um, decrypt it. We had a case where uh, on a certain customer site, I won't go into the details, but the uh, New Zealand police actually uplifted the uh, hard drive of the recorder. Uh, after two weeks of uh, looking at it they actually had to contact um, ourselves here in New Zealand to um, actually organise uh, RTEC themselves to set up a decryption code once they had the authorization to do so so that they could actually see what was on the uh, recorder. The recorder because it's IP based interface can be remotely accessed so that um, we can have a head office um, and with a branch office and we can actually remote into the uh, recorder and um, through the internet and uh, access the recorder and get the uh, files etc off also have a central uh, centralized backing up serve system which is called the vault which actually can also rec back up all branch records or branch recorders so we might have five one two ten recorders around the country and we have a, the vault software which actually will log in remotely at a set time and drag all the calls back to a centralized backup and um, for um, pre preserving the recordings the software interface on the AQ, again, is quite simple to use. There is a separate presentation on how this all works, but fundamentally, uh, again, it's simple to use. You can see all the details of the lines and the status of the lines and the actual calls down here with extension numbers and uh, information that um, 
has happened. The example configuration of the AQ series we can have a, a centric solution where we have got simply uh, all the CO lines coming directly into a uh, customer's premises and I've just got SLT um, lines on it and the customer wishes to have um, recording. In the diagram here we can see that we've got the Centrix network, we have the recorder on the customer premises with the SLT phones on it. Now because this is a, a Centrix solution they do not have any pre-recording we can have the RTEC saying having a, a pre-recorded uh, greeting that the customer can have all set up and uh, basically inform the customer that it may be recorded for um, training purposes. On a PABX solution we can put the um, a PABX or IPPX type of solution we can actually put the recorder on the CO lines uh, in front of the um, phone system and then have all call the lines going through that to the PABX and then taking the SMDR out of the PABX and putting it through to the um, recorder. Now if we look at this diagram here we've got our CO lines coming in here, here's our recorder being put through to the PABX and then we've got the SMDR linking back. Now that can be linked back via RS-232 or TCIP. Get our phones in here and across the network with PCs. Now, because the SMDR is connected across, the recorder is linking up all the external calls with uh, the, the number that dialed out or the call on ID that came in and linking that in, in with the extensions within the system. To the point the RTEC does this so well that the call may come in, be answered by the operator, the RTEC will record the operator's um, conversation as one part of the call, the operator may transfer that call through to extension 207. The uh, recording record will then show 200, that's this part of the call, and then it will start recording extension 207's part of the call as a separate um, record. If 207 then transfers it on to 208, it will then put 207 into it as a recorded um, uh, record and start then recording the, uh, the new record on 208. It's quite flexible and fully transparent on a PABX. We can then, um, with the uh, AQ Record Digital or Voice Over IP handsets, this is using a, uh, a voice trigger type scenario. And effectively what we're doing is we're, we're monitoring the handset or the headsets. Isn't the my, my favourite way of doing it but it's still quite a very effective way of doing it and uh, customers who just want a, a quick and simple uh, recording solution uh, that is cost effective this is the, one of the best ways of doing it. So effectively we've got a, um, the little uh, audio adapter sitting here on the headset or the handset and that goes back to the ports on the recorder and any conversations that are um, had on that telephone uh, when they answer the call on the headset or handset it immediately starts the recorder into trigger mode and it starts um, recording the conversation. You're not going to get the details of the call line IDs etc. You'll simply know that extension such and such because it was on port 1 or 2 made this call at this time. Okay, It's effective. Horses for courses. I'm going to go back and we're just touching a little bit on the uh, Centrix FXS Gateway VoIP solution. Now the reason I'm pulling this out is there's a lot of these small call centers or even very large call centers now don't require a full voice over IP system on on their site. They're simply looking for voice over IP lines and they're making massive outgoing calls or incoming calls but mainly outgoing. So a lot of outbound call centers they've simply got an FXS gateway. And it could be a 24 port gateway, it could be an 8 port gateway and they've got SLT's phones with a headset on them. They make an outgoing call uh, they get the voice over IP traffic and uh, all the, uh, the savings costs. They don't have to have huge investment um, on their, their, um, their hardware side with the PABX they simply got FXS with a, an SLT. So I'm just pointing this out to you guys out there that be aware there's a lot of outbound call centers particularly that are simple to the point but again they're looking for the um, recording for their outgoing calls or what they're doing. Um, we've got solutions out there in the, uh, the market now from anything from a four line recorder 
uh, to a 64 channel recorder that it does uh, 20,000 outbound calls a day using this FXS um, solution. This is this is how they do it. So just be aware of that. So yeah, some of you guys might go, oh, analog recorder. No, that we don't need it. But this is this is a uh, real time. This is what what is happening out there in the market at this point in time. And then of course we could have the SLTs um, on on the PABX. On top of that, of course, we can do uh, uh, RTs and etc. So we can record radio telephones, um, recordings, and that kind of thing. So don't rule that out. So where would we use recording? Police departments, fire departments, the military, uh, government departments, security companies. We've got a number of security companies out there um, uh, monitoring um, anything from CO lines through to uh, voice over IP recording. Um, phone sales confirmation. Think about your own businesses in some respects. Um, how many times uh, do you need to verify your sale or verify what was said or disputes are arised? Uh, any business nowadays should look at um, doing um, recording support centres, uh, medical service confirmation, doctors, that type of thing, uh, classrooms, um, and when recording lectures, etc. Stock exchange market, your TV shopping type environment. Banks and financial services, um, important point. Credit card call centres, uh, this is an important point for PCI compliance. Your travel agents, your insurance agents, um, even uh, a fast um, takeaway shop or retail shop now when taking orders over the telephone. Thank you for your time and with uh, enabling us to go through this presentation. We hope it was helpful. If you have uh, any queries or questions, please do not hesitate to um, contact us.